Okay, I'm here today representing a company called AI Motive. It's an Eastern European startup based in Hungary, Budapest. Small offices also in Helsinki, New York, uh, sorry, Tokyo, and uh, Mountain View. AI Motive is slightly over two years old, but the growth has been pretty exceptional. We are today over 160 people already. And uh, we've been backed up by companies like Bosch, NVIDIA, Samsung. And we're focusing on AI-based software and hardware for self-driving cars. And I have here, up here, a very, very bold statement about autonomous driving anywhere, which is more or less the vision that we're going for. And there are two key things that need to happen and take place for this very, very bold vision to succeed. First of all, you need a system that is scalable, something that will work on a global basis easily, and it needs to be robust and safe so that uh, whenever you're driving somewhere out there, it will work. And if you think about us humans, you can drop us more or less anywhere in the world, and we can drive, maybe apart from the UK, but that's another story. But uh, we can drive to some extent. And the reason is that the traffic rules are more or less the same, and uh, the system is vision-based. So we are using our vision as the primary sensor to drive. And it's lane markings, it's traffic lights, it's, it's traffic signs. It's a vision-based system. So fairly quickly, the question comes up, what if you mimic the human driving? Couldn't you then do a system that could drive anywhere in the world? So the question is, what if we do a camera-based self-driving car? Couldn't it drive anywhere? And if you think about a system that needs to drive, be it a human or be it a car, there are these couple of things that you need to crack. The first one is you need to detect. And you need to detect where you are. Are you on the road? Where are you on the road? And then you need to detect what's around you. And once you crack that, you can go to the next step, which is the decision-making part. So you need to be able to decide where and what should I do next? What is the trajectory that I should plan for? And once you've cracked the decision part, you can go towards the doing part. So then you just need to put that decision into action and get the car where you want it to be. And this detection is, is what we, as humans, we do with vision. And if we roll back only three years from today until 2014, and somebody would have asked me, Nico, is it possible to do a machine system that could mimic human vision? My answer would have been a clear no, a clear no. And at that time, I was working at Microsoft. I was heading a computer vision team. And I was planning and we visioned very nice features for mobile phone cameras. We wanted to surprise mobile phone camera users by pulling up information as a surprise when they're using the camera and looking through the viewfinder. And the surprise thing was, was important. We wanted to surprise and not create false expectations because the stuff that we had, the algorithms, they went robust. So they didn't always work. We wanted to do stuff like take a picture of a plate of food, bring up the calories. Take a picture of a whiteboard, store it already as notes because that's most likely what you're doing. Or take a picture of a person and offer a chance to blur the background, create nice bokeh effects. And segmenting the person automatically on the fly while looking at the viewfinder was actually tricky. It, it turned out pretty, pretty impossible even with sophisticated sensors at that time. But at the same time, in 2014, the stuff called AI started to appear. There were white papers coming up, promising much better performance than traditional machine learning computer algorithms at that time. And most of the researchers who had been there for 10 years, they were still saying, won't be possible. And then there was this new camp saying, yeah, it is possible. And I actually visited here in Paris a small startup called Moodstocks. They were designing an application with what you could take a picture of a sneaker pretty much from any direction. And then you could check out online where to find that specific sneaker model or shoe model and, and find a good price or even figure out what the sneaker was. They were acquired by Google in 2016. And the first time I visited AI Motive, that was 2016, I was shown a demo that just blew me away. And in this demo, 
The guys at AI Motive were using one PC, a very simple webcam, a cheap one, and it could segment people from the live video stream in real time. A few weeks back, I visited Budapest. We pulled out that old network, and uh, we captured a short video so that I could show what I sh saw in 2016. Let's see if we can get it running. Yeah, here we go. And since I'm not the greatest hair model anymore, I asked a few of our software guys to come by and uh, show the performance. Here you can see. And again, the fact it isn't perfect, but it is pretty reliable no matter how I turn. And this is the key here. The network wasn't trained to do this. It was trained to detect people in traffic. But it was doing a better job than we were able to do from a single frame by using many minutes of compute power just a bit over a year earlier. And that's, that was, for me, that was the moment when I decided that I want to be a part of this. This is something I want to do. And if we now roll back to today, which is one and a half years after that video, after the performance of that video, let's have a look where we are. So here in this video, you can actually see uh, the performance that we have from one network today. So this one network is able to output the street segmentation. It is able to segment vehicles. It is able to create bounding boxes. And it is able to label them. And then at the bottom of this, this uh, now a slide should be a video. At the bottom of this video, you can actually see a scenery, this, this black and white thing. And that's actually the distance to these objects. We are getting there. We are getting closing up regarding human vision. So, so the machines are there. Jensen Huang, a couple of weeks back, was able, in, in his keynote, to make a very interesting statement that I would like to replicate and quote here. He said, with AI, from the absence of information, you can create new information. And this, this dark area at the bottom of this picture is exactly that. We are having here one mono camera as an input, and we are able to create a distance map with this one single camera. And if you think how we humans do it, I mean, we obviously, we have a stereo system. We have two eyes. But we have also many other cues to figure out the depth. We can, we can use uh, stereo for short distances, but we can also use parallax by moving our head. We can refocus our pupil a little bit. And then there is this thing of, of known objects. So we know the size of a car. We know the size of a person. And we can figure out the distance. And this is how we trained also this network. We trained it with known objects. But they weren't necessarily the objects that you see in this picture. And the remarkable thing here is that we are able to output a distance map with these, this, for this whole scene, even, even we haven't trained for that scene. And that's, that's, that's the coolness of AI. Let's see if we can get the next video playing. OK, here we go. This is a slightly better example. On the top corner, we have uh, the, the input. Again, one RGB camera. We have a depth map, this time in color. We have optical flow. And then we are starting to calculate the visual odometry, which basically means the track of the car. So we have now perfect understanding of what's around. So we are able to detect the scene. We know where the road is. We know where we are on the road. And we are able to calculate our position based on cameras. And once you can do this, you can actually move forward and you can start driving. And in this video here, we are showing now a parking demonstrating with our car. Again, only based on cameras. The car is driving by itself. It is driving a couple of floors down in a garage, and then it will park itself. And this is being done only with the camera. Obviously, no GPS or nothing else. Right, so we're getting there. Vision-based driving with a computer is getting there. And it's mostly made with software. So the hardware you see in this particular car is, is off the shelf. Anybody can buy exactly the same hardware that we have inside, and you could replicate the setup. So the hardware actually is, is not restricting, in this specific demo case, uh, what is possible. But since it's software, you will have to test the software also somehow. And you come up with the question, how many kilometers or how many garages do I need to drive? Do I need to drive in China? Do I need to drive in the US, everywhere in the world as well to make it work? What if there are different weather conditions? And uh, 
the final question is, what if I update the software after I've been driving thousands, millions of miles or kilometers? Do I need to redrive again in all places of the, of, of the planet? We believe that the answer is actually not going out there and driving on a global basis, but to create a simulator, a game-like engine, where you can test this type of software so that once you release a new software, you can retest all of your base cases and uh, have a good idea on the baseline and the quality of the software. So let me show you an example of the video, of, of the simulator. In this, this uh, video on the left-hand side, you can see the simulator output, which is basically a graphic rendering of, of highway driving. In this case, the car is overtaking, so we're designing. And on the right-hand side, the software, you can see what the software is doing, the calculations. And the simulator is actually a pretty cool way to test because you can also test only parts of the software you can provide ground truth segmentation in this case. You can test the logic or vice versa. And with a simulator, we can actually go out and then test pretty much already anywhere fairly easily once we've modeled the scenes. Obviously, you also want to have variation when in your testing. So weather is, is one very important variation. And in this example, I'm showing you a video of a ring road around Göteborg, Sweden. We're showing the same place with rain. We're showing it in darkness, in rain. And since it's Sweden, obviously, we do have to show it also with some snow. So with this type of testing and with these type of features already available, being able to mimic human driving, we're getting pretty close. And again, reflecting back the fact that 2014, nothing of this was possible. In 2016, there was promise. And today, we're actually out there driving based on camera driving software. The speed of development has been really astonishing. But before we make the final conclusion, let's talk a little bit more about this particular frame. This is just a caption of the video I was showing earlier. And uh, in this picture, there's one problem. You're not able to see the road where this car is driving. And let's reflect. We all have been in this situation. Maybe not driving in snow, but let's think there has been a too dense fog. What do you do as a person, as an individual when you're driving? You continue driving, right? You guess or you believe and you want to believe that there is a road because somebody else has been driving it. What if you're the first one driving after a snowfall? You would still continue driving roughly estimating where the road is. Self-driving car can't do it. It can't take the risk on your behalf. It would have to stop. A second example, I'm, I'm a pilot in free time as a hobby and I was approaching an airfield in Finland, to which I've been approaching quite many times. And uh, while approaching, I suddenly realized that on the runway I'm planning to land, there is an airplane parked where I'm supposed to land. And it took me quite a while to realize that it wasn't actually a real air airplane. It was a patch of asphalt. Somebody had went out and fixed the runway, and visually to me it seemed that there was an airplane on the airfield. My personal vision system failed. And we humans are actually, we are not equipped to drive safely based on vision only. And that's why we're seeing all these driver aid systems coming up, equipping us with more cameras, more sensors, because we're simply not up to the task, especially in conditions from a weather perspective or in some cases, because of driving too fast. And exactly the same thing applies also for self-driving cars. A purely vision-based system, in my opinion, personal opinion, won't be safe. It won't be able to scale up. And uh, that's, in my opinion, still pretty OK. We are at AI Motive. We are concentrating on camera-based driving that's our primary focus, and that's the thing we want to crack, because it does have the scalability benefits. You don't need a fantastic 3D virtual map that needs to be up to date on a global basis in order to drive. 
but it alone won't be sufficient. You will have to add other sensors. You will have to add radars. LiDAR wouldn't harm. You could check very easily the distance to the objects as well. But for me, kind of really the breathtaking thing is, in general, what's happening in the industry and the speed. And therefore, my recommendation to all of you, whether you are an entrepreneur or investor, and you might actually not be in this field of self-driving cars, is to follow autonomous driving. Because small companies like AI Motive and large corporations at the moment, they are really pushing the technology, and they are pushing it really hard. And quite a lot of this stuff will be very useful, most likely in your field as well. Thank you for listening, and uh, I wish you all a great show.